it begins at the sales order level, right? What we did is we added a log button here. Basically, this is taking a snapshot of um, this sales order at the time that I click this button. Okay. Whenever I click this, I create a new change order. So I already clicked it a couple of minutes ago. So I already have my change order, but otherwise it stores all of them into the related records. And the, the terminology we use uh, is the name of the sales order dash uh, one as the first change order or dash two, three, four, five, as you go. Okay. Makes sense. Everything at the line level is a perfect snapshot of the sales order. Uh, now what we have at the header level is more of the change order information as, you know, name and so forth. We have the sales order info from the original one. It's, it's really a, a, an exact copy of your sales order. The idea is to make changes on this change order record because by doing so, you're not interfering with your inventory or, you know, commitment and so forth. I can start changing quantities per line. So for example, I can say, okay, here, instead of two, I want to have a change order for maybe increasing by two. So now the new quantity is four and I want to maybe increase that one to two. I can reduce that one to one. And then I can also add a new line. So let me just maybe copy the item. It's faster. So if I just do this, I copy the item and I can say, okay, I want to also add this new item for an extra five. Maybe I could have just done it on this line, obviously, but I just yes. want to show that we can do in multiple lines. Okay. Here, the, the unit price by default is, is it's returning the item from the item record. So in, in their environment, the unit price and unit cost is the same. Uh, so I can just maybe increase this to maybe say 15, just like the, the line above, right? Okay. Uh, the unit cost is just returned by a, uh, the, the item record itself. Uh, we have some possibility to override the cost. Okay, so when I save this, it's not on a user event, it's a, it's a map reduce. So we have this little queue that gets triggered. So it process every line and the idea is to compare first what my original quantity was from my sales order and what the new quantity is. And then same thing with the uh, unit price and unit cost, just to compute you know the, the economics of that change order. But the, the most important part is these two column here okay so variance quantity and variance amount because whenever it's not zero this is where that change order will really uh, focus on let me just refresh and let's see if it's done no more green banner so it's done processing so now my variants are showing you know the extra two here okay. uh, as we can see on the right with that the, the amount difference in term of unit price right so i we can see the original was 1560 now it's 3120 so the, the variance is 1560, which is the two at 780. So it helps really isolate what's changing so you can see that clearly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we also have that little summary table at the top where we isolate, you know, uh, what the item amount is, what my tax is, if, and the, the total variance in terms I of- I see. So what you're trying to show is that by making the change, here's what the change has done from the original sales order to the second. And you can see it at a, at a summary level here. Yep, exactly. And we also have, you know, a little PDF uh, that, you know, even though I have nine lines, my PDF will only show the one where I have variance. So here, what we show is, well, the, the, the new quantity, which is, you know, the, the new quantity that I entered with, you know, all of the information, uh, obviously the rate and amount, but here, this is where you have that, you know, inst instead of using the words variance, we use just change order quantity and the change order amount. So you see the, the positive two, my negative one with the, yes. imp with the impact. Uh, so obviously this 1756 should match this 1756 here, which is driven by all of these amounts. Uh, plus if they are taxable or not, makes sense. It does make so, sense. Yeah, so it doesn't, you know, we only sh display the, the lines where you really something happened. Mm -hmm. So under shipping and billing and, uh, and... By default, it's whatever you have on the sales order. So Got the it. ship to, it could change. So what I want to show you is whenever you approve this, two things happen. I'll go back and edit. Once you mark it approved, this is where more scripts are kicking in. Two things would happen. Uh, First thing is, well, obviously we just mark that, okay, we are processing stuff. One thing that is important is we lock this because we don't want anyone to touch this change order anymore. We will separate in two category, all of the positive variants, this line, this line, and this line, they would be uh, under a new sales order. Okay, so we are creating a new sales order for these three lines only. 
uh, for only the variance in terms of quantity. But the negative line will go uh, hit the original sales order. Okay, so now if I go back to this and I refresh, we are creating a really a new sales order. So as soon as the sales order will be created, uh, we, we flag it on the uh, change order at the top here. So we link have it. that. Yeah, we link it with the change order. We would also have the linkage uh, instead because you know it's not creating from an estimate or an opportunity yeah, or makes something. Makes sense. You cross reference each other. Okay. And what has the customer said are some of the great thing, you know, some of the, some of the good things they're now seeing because of this capacity. Uh, it's time saver. Mm -hmm. Really. It's uh it's the amount of time to just uh, that they save to just create a new sales order and to compute the difference and to send, you know, the PDF is a, is a, is a big win because they can really target specific line instead of sending maybe an email, which is, okay, we're going to change this one. That will be the impact on this line and so right. forth. So we have, you know, something that really targets the change itself. And we have the automation that takes care of either generating the new sales order or hitting the, or touching, you know, the, the original one for negative yeah. impact. This is pretty powerful. I can see how this would save a lot of time and help with the management, especially with these sales orders that last a long time mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. and they need little changes. And it's very hard to remember what you said and who approved it helps them manage against a customer's budget. Yeah, yep, what they're trying to do. Correct. Yep, exactly.